Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today I've got a really good tip for you. It's one that will not come into play for everybody, but I know a lot of you guys out there that live in the North Country, that live up in Canada, uh, even down in Florida, will appreciate this tip. And it's a question I get asked all of the time. I, get asked, I got asked this recently when I was down in Florida. I get asked it when I do seminars. I get asked uh, from viewers like you through YouTube. And the question is, is there a way to prevent the number of bite offs or the number of bites you get from toothy critters, your northern pike, your muskie, your pickerel, when you are out bass fishing? Because as you and I all know, there are lots of times you head out to a lake where the number of bite offs, your interactions that you come across with toothy critters can drastically change the outcome of the day for you. It can really take a fun outing to becoming a very expensive outing and one that's not nearly as enjoyable because you've lost your favorite bait or you've lost three or four expensive jerk baits or crank baits or whatever it is. The number of bite offs you have in a day can really drastically change the outcome so much so that you may have a lake you really want to fish, but you don't go there anymore because you know it's going to end up costing you a bunch of bites because it's overrun with toothy critters. It doesn't matter if it's northern pike, pickerel, or muskie. I have come across lakes with all three of those species that have, have way too many stunted little fish. Yes, sometimes you go to a lake where you're like, you know what, I'm good catching a couple of muskies because they're good sized. Or I'm good catching, you know, a handful of pike throughout the course of a day because it actually will increase the amount of fish catches, right? We all love catching fish, but sometimes you go to a body of water where you're targeting bass or targeting walleye or other game fish species and you just consistently run into a toothy critter that will end up costing you a lot of money and just driving you nuts throughout the day. So the question is, are there things that you can do that will actually increase the number of bites that you get from uh, bass or the target species and decrease the number of bites that you get from toothy critters? And in my opinion, there absolutely is. I've got several things that I will do that I will change in terms of my techniques that when I come across a lake like this, it will really help lower the number of bite offs which then in turn increases the number of fish catches that I have for the targeted species. So that's what I want to talk about today. Before I get into those tips, I do want to remind you that if you are a fan of the show, head over into the uh, store, the Matt 7 Fishing store, and you can purchase some apparel that's uh, got the Matt 7 Fishing logo on it, and it's a great way to help promote the channel. Also, if you do happen to run into a lake where you get bit off all the time and you want to purchase new tackle to replace the ones you've lost, please use the Tackle Warehouse affiliate link that's provided in the description. If you use that link, a small percentage will come back, help support the channel. Go ahead and bookmark that for future purpose purchases as well. It's very much appreciated. And you got to replace some of the baits that you lose because if you live in an area that is infested with toothy critters, you know what I'm talking about. You can blow through tackle super fast. So what are some of the things that you can do to help limit the number of bites that you get from them? The first and foremost is you can, uh, you can drastically lower the number of pike bites and musky bites and, and pickerel bites if you stop using flashy baits. What I mean by that is your spinner baits your spoons, your chrome colors on, uh, say, jerk baits or crank baits. Uh, if you're throwing chatter baits, make sure you're not throwing a chrome or gold colored blade. Replace it with a painted blade. That small change in itself will make a huge difference. But if you're throwing something that puts off a lot of flash, that is like the number one thing you can do to call in pike from all over the place. So reduce the the lower the amount of spinner baits you're throwing don't throw spoons don't throw chrome colors and if you're throwing a chatter bait throw painted blades that's a huge thing when it comes to lure color choice do not throw your bright whites your pearls your chartreuses that very bright white color and the the you know the chartreuses those bright colors are absolutely calling uh pike and musky in to eat your bait you want to change over to dark colored baits your blacks your green pumpkins 
your uh, blues, that hue alone, that's a big difference. Pike love, even musky, they all love bright colors. Your fluorescent colors, your pearls, your whites, it calls them like nothing else. So when you mix like a white spinnerbait is the, probably the number one thing you can throw for pike. You got the flash from the blades and you got a white skirt probably with a white trailer. That is probably the best thing you can throw for pike. Do not throw it if you're trying to catch bass in a pike infested place because you're gonna end up catching many times more pike than you will bass. So you wanna reduce the flash and go with your darker natural colors. So that's two big things. You also want to slow down. Pike and muskie and pickerel are built for speed. They are one of the fastest swimming freshwater fish that's out there. If you, you know, if you think you can retrieve a bait too fast, you'll never do it too fast when you're talking about fishing for those, those species. In fact, the faster you retrieve a bait generally will get you more bites when you're targeting those species. So you want to slow down. Instead of throwing your fast moving baits, slow down with dragging baits, uh, your bottom moving baits, anything that's just not going to create a huge amount of uh, disturbance and quick moving erratic motion, that just is a major triggering motion for toothy critters. So you want to reduce that. The two other things you, you can do have to do more so with the cover that you're fishing. Uh, if you're talking about northern pike specifically, and pickerel, they love weeds, they love grass. So if you're fishing shallow grass and you're having a trouble running into them, say you're frog fishing or you're just fishing uh, baits through the grass and you're running into them, move out deeper. A lot of times they'll be up in the shallower grass, move out to the weed line edge. If that's what you have to fish, move out to the deeper edge. It seems like you'll reduce the amount of pike bites and pickerel bites you get by moving out deeper from fishing shallower grass cover. The other thing I'll say with that is a lot of times if you're in a very heavily infested lake with pike and pickerel, the bass will be grouped up into certain areas. You may catch them mixed in, intermingled together, but a lot of times the bass will be grouped up. So if you do find an area with bass, slow down in that area and you'll probably catch a lot more bass in that area. The last thing that I want to mention is, again, if you're on a lake that's got grass and that's where you're catching a lot of the fish, move away from the grass if you can. Some lakes you can't. Some lakes have grass everywhere you go and that's the primary structure you're fishing. But if you have the ability to move outside of the grass, say to deeper humps or a, a rock vein or points, uh, just deeper outside of the grass. So if the grass is an eight feet or less and you've got structure you can fish out in 15 feet of water, you will really drastically lower the amount of pike bites and toothy critter bites that you get by fishing deeper outside of that area that they're living. It makes a very big difference. Unfortunately, sometimes when you go to these lakes, you can't get away from them. But I'm telling you by changing the type of bait that you're using, and by changing the color of the bait that you're using, that alone will lower it. But if you can change the bait color, change the bait type, and get, out, uh, get outside of the primary area where they're living, so you get out and you start fishing rock humps away from the weed, you will almost entirely eliminate the number of pike bites that you get. If you were getting 10 in an outing, you probably drop it down to one or two. It makes a huge difference. If you stay up where they're at and you throw the big flashy vibrating baits, you will get 10 to 15 pike bite or whatever it is throughout the day, which is going to drastically increase the number of bite offs that you have and therefore end up being a hole in the pocket. So guys, I hope this helps. Take this, uh, these tips from me from my own experience. I've lived in Northern Pike country my entire life. I have lakes that are so infested with pike, it's pretty disgusting, but if you, Im implement these few tips, it will drastically lower that number of pike bites that you get. So I hope it was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. If you've got other tips, throw it up in the comment section for the rest of us. I'd love to learn more if there's more out there, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have tips as well. So please share them with us. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video.